Ohm Brothers. Uh, and this video is about the great uh, colonization conspiracy from China and also the grand part of that is the lying about the population figures and also a very strong or artificially strong emphasis on the so-called one-child policy. <coughs> so, number one, the actual population of China is 1.6 or 1.7 billion people around in there. They're lying by about the population of the United States. And the reason that they are lying about their official figures, and they lie about all their official figures, the reason they're doing that is because each individual official from the you know public level gets uh, he gets rewards if he can if he says that he gets he has a lower population. So, in our personal experience, uh, cousin Shamrock and myself have uh, never been counted in a census. More interestingly, his wife nor his kids have ever been counted in a census. Um, his, wife, his wife is Chinese. And so the census people just kind of skip around and they, they seem to skip us. <laughs> so this is what happens on the street level. And this is why when there was an expose, it was um, Jiangsu Jiangsu Satellite TV, Jiangsu Weishi is our province, uh, is Jiangsu. The satellite TV for that had an expose and a, a program about the real population figures. And about seven or eight years ago, um, let's say eight or nine years ago, they determined it would be 1.6 or 1.7 billion people. And I think the population Okay, so let's say 1.7 billion people by today. I don't know. But it's an enormous amount of people that they're lying about and not counting. This also helps their policy of forced colonization of the rest of the world. They're forcing colonization through economic policies by owning all these ports, the Panama Canal, uh, producing about one quarter of the world's internationally traded goods, and through this soft power, they've gained access to citizenship to every country in the world. So Chinese can even go be you know, getting visas in Sudan and in really weird places. They can also get uh, citizenship in America, Italy, and all these other places. And the flip side of that is that uh, you're not allowed to get citizenship in China. So China has a zero immigration policy, and it is effectively enforced. I have never seen a foreigner staying here who's who's uh, gotten a Chinese passport, um, fake or otherwise, and there's just no such thing. And so this this talks about the conspiracy. Now. The Chinese right now are, are beginning to get critical of this one-child policy. One-child policy is not really what people think it is. There's actually no law in China saying you're only allowed to have one child, and the policy itself does not state how many children. It merely became assumed after years and years and of practice within the very city centers in China, it only became assumed that the number was one. but it's actually not written anywhere as, as far as I know and the enforcement of it is also very similar to what's happening in in all countries there's a demographic shift that they're trying to enforce I say they I mean by international bankers who created communism and we all know who those special people are um, they definitely want to kill as many Chinese babies as they can and they their idea of population control is killing a lot, a lot of babies. And so with the initiation of this policy, which was widely very, very unpopular in China, if you watch the YouTube video um, produced by Chinese guys living in America, I think, it's called Rethinking China's One-Child Policy. 
um, they they show official stats and official things, and there was a 90% disagreement. You know, 90% of Chinese said we didn't we don't want this. Um, you know, population limitation. The now you know so-called one-child policy. So it's not very evenly enforced at all, and it's enforced specifically on city-going people, which is about, let's say, 40%, 45% of the population. And then the rest of the population has, um, you know, two or three or four, however many kids they want, especially if they're minorities. Now, the way this works on the street is that the minorities have better cohesion. So your Jew-like uh, Uyghurs, and then you have your Hui Muslims, which are another type of Muslim, which I tend to like better. And then there's the all these other different uh, people. They seem to have a special policy where they can just have as many kids as they want while they're cohesive. So I'm pretty sure that the Han Chinese government has sort of gone into their neighborhoods and tried to levy fines and do things to them but they aren't successful because uh, these groups have pretty strong brotherhoods and uh, pretty tight so tight-knit societies that protect itself from outsiders and so the policy is sort of unofficially they just say well okay let let all the minorities um, produce as many children as they want uh, demographically the the numbers look pretty shocking um, when I was studying Chinese about uh, I was studying Chinese about 13 years ago. Uh, there, my book was called Elementary Chinese Readers. I highly recommend it. But it stated that officially the percentage of Han Chinese in China's society is 96 percent, and the other four percent were what they call these 56 nationalities. What they mean by that is 56 races, and I would call them um, sub races of the Han nationality because to most of us they would look Chinese just like other Chinese um, but they may have typically they have one difference like they might have slightly curly hair or they might have you know hazel eyes um, some of them could grow a beard and, and other things like this um, never never two or more different features at once and so they always appear to be pretty much Chinese or what they call Hanhua which is you know, Hanified, you know, groups. And these are 56 officially recognized groups. And where does that official recognition go? Well, it goes to the canteens and it goes to the universities. And when you pick up your food and you, you pay your tuition, they do it just like in the States. They got quotas and they, and they try to quote unquote help out these groups. Well, this will bring us full circle back to where I started this discussion is there these people claiming to be of minorities most of them are lying now <laughs> and they're lying because they want these benefits and in reality they have very little if any of these nationalities in them so there is a situation where there is a demographic shift officially they've lost six percentage points officially uh, the Han Chinese have gone from when I started studying Chinese 13 years ago to now they've lost six percentage points and they're saying that there's only 90 percent are, are Han Chinese now. Han Chinese is kind of what Chinese take as what whites would consider Europeans who think well Italians and, and Dutch they're like way different and these groups are all very different but they're considered as a whole to be Han and so even just the distinction of Han with 56 sub Hanified races is a highly simplified um, picture that you're getting because uh, there is that tighter cohesion, there's more anarchy, less central government in Asia in general and I don't think central government has ever played uh, a, an enormously strong role in China and and that's why they have these pretty tight-knit groups that have developed into separate and distinct races. And one of the books you have to read in China is, is an ancestry book call, uh, called um, Bai Jia Xing. And that's a, a book you have to read when you're little. And you have to learn about where your surname came from and, and what group that is. 
even though most of these surnames have already been wiped into one you know, race that they call the Han race. And I think that particular distinction or non-distinction was created also with the creation of the fake Chinese state with the fake revolution and an actual just change of power structure concerning who is raping these weak and easily addicted Chinese people. Um, and only recently have these Chinese people been lifting themselves up out of uh, so-called poverty, but we would just call it just filth and ignorance, and smoking opium till they're laying on the floor and they can't do anything, heavily addicted to alcohol, um, betel nuts, opium, everything that you could possibly think of they were, and still mostly are addicted to these things. It's just that if you even have just 6% of this population I would say even 4 or 5% of this population, if we readjust it for being 1.67 billion, then they, they only have to produce as much as an American, these 5% Chinese, and the economy has already surpassed the, the U.S. economy as a whole. And this is something that's getting confused in the economics debate, like is China actually going to be more powerful than the US and the individualist westerners are saying well no because their average you know per capita GDP will still be very low and they don't get it that in global politics that's not how power is that's not how it's levied if a certain group acts together then that that whole group's resources are counted as a whole and you can't say that's not fair because they're 1.7 billion people it is fair because they decided to work together. And guess who's not working together? Well, the recent Ramsey Paul video and other things are mentioning this. Um, even what's his face, conservative uh, columnists are, are saying, well, whites did not act together on this recent election to at least have a white president of what we'd formerly thought of as a white nation, at least prior to 1965. And and this is something you know, whites need to consider, especially in North America. This relates to circumcision as well, because as we uncircumcise ourselves and we unjew ourselves, we become more and more uh, cohesive as a group, and we we love our parents more, and we we bond better with other people, and we become more normal. And this is a positive benefit of shedding this horrible right that has been forced upon you know most of the American people uh, including women up to 1987 and now you know including men uh, only men up until now and perhaps if we continue to struggle against uh, circumcision and mutilation of men in in North America we might succeed in bringing the neonatal rate below 50% in the next 10 years. Um, it's been a very, very slow process for America, and I hold that it's because it's a very strictly Zionist-occupied territory. You have the, the New York uh, banking district, diamond district, gold, jewelry, what they call the joint. You have the international banking mafia, the special white people, have a stronger presence here than even in Great Britain and in Australia. <clears throat> and then you add to that that the U.S. is sort of secretly actually an ex-prison colony where quote-unquote indentured servants were, were here to serve out their prison terms. So, you know, unfortunately a lot of our older American blood is um, the blood of, of prisoners. And and so this is a lot of karma to deal with. We have no idea what those people did. Some people said they simply were creditors. But when somebody is a creditor, why are they crediting? Were they uh, a gambling addict? Were they a drug addict? What what was their issue? So uh, there's there's always been a strict difference between Americans and Europeans in terms of the quality and the level of normalcy. 
And I think it's a really good goal for every American, every white American to see, see themselves as a European, to go back to Europe or at least spiritually begin to see themselves as an Aryan in general and not <clears throat> do that. So again, let's uh, recap. You know, the big the big scam going on right now is that China has you know stood up just enough to where they're becoming more powerful than the US which is fine but um, know what this entails it's colonialism it's uh, imperialism and you're beginning to be treated unfairly in a one-way direction you have to do a lot of things for Chinese that Chinese will not do for you and you will always be foreigner as the word law Wai means and you are you know welcome here for a visit uh, you're welcome here even for a year of a work visa um, I still you know leave the doors open to this place open for brothers that come for visits we've had many visitors to this place and you know they enjoy themselves a lot it's kind of the easy life here it's not really all that hard otherwise um, but you, know, you keep in mind that that there is an unequal relationship and it could be a positive thing because maybe the Chinese are then forcing you to really find out what your heritage is and get back to that uh, I don't think any of us can really realistically say we're Americans if we could before um, I don't think we could really say it now um, it is a very messed up demographically messed up um, nation the, the it's a nation on paper it's not a real nation in in traditional terms and you know you ought to start looking for a local colony or cult to join or start thinking about going overseas to rejoin with your ancestors or people of your same ideology and finally you know we're not in the stage where we have to propagandize a lot against porn and masturbation and that work is mostly being done there are probably hundreds of thousands of men online right now that are actively commenting uh, against the sexualization in society um, a very very different scene from when celibacy.info the Brotherhood of the Sacred Word started it a very very different scene our stage right now is to make the brotherhoods to join together and to make the groups and get rid of that North American individualism otherwise you're going to be mowed over by these very cohesive Asians and uh, I hope everybody considers that and uh, you don't have to be super scared of China but on the other hand don't say it's just 1.3 billion people um, don't say oh per capita GDP is nothing and all these other things which are uh, false or ir irrelevant you know know the size of the issue we're dealing with and it's just that big it's not any bigger it's not any smaller so um, I hope this was of use to everybody and amen and om